create beautiful tables using our programming. Look at the table that's below me at the moment. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got colors, it's got arrows, it's got all sorts of things, bells and whistles. That's what you want when you create a table. You can do it in R. We're gonna talk about the GT Extras package today. It's easy to use. I'm gonna walk you through every single step of the code that I use to create this table. Stick with me, don't go away. Let's do this, boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Two things. Firstly, you have access to the data that I'm using for this particular example. So you can practice this at home, right? It's the MPG data set, it's built into R, and I'm gonna show you how you can access that. Secondly, I'm gonna give you access to all of the code that I'm using, right? So you don't have to sit and worry about kind of trying to take notes. You can, you'll be able to see all of the data that I'm using. I've got it on a web page. It's got little annotations with explanatory notes, etc., etc. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? So that said, let's jump right in. Let's start looking at the code to produce this table. As always, I've loaded the Tidyverse package. I've also loaded the GT Extras package. Uh, you actually don't need to load the uh, GT package. That actually comes with GT Extras. That's a little bit superfluous. Um, but you, you've got to load your packages first. Let's jump right in. Let's talk about how to do the, the tables. The first part of the code is really the data wrangling that I did in order to create the table itself. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with respect to that right now because uh, this isn't a video about data wrangling but I'll just briefly say you know we've filtered the data just to one year 2008 we've grouped by class we've summarized it and created a couple of summary variables um, if you do not understand what I'm doing over here with the summary summarize function etc etc go and watch other videos that I've got all about the tidyverse and dplyr etc etc I can't get into that in this video so I'm assuming you've comfortable with tidyverse packages uh, to start with. Um, I've done something that's probably a little bit repetitive in the sense that I've created a variable called efficiency rating and I've said use the case when function and by the way I've got a video about case when so if you find that confusing go and watch that um, and for uh, I've just I've created a categorization high medium and low for fuel efficiency and then below that I've created these little icons and I've used case when again and I've said efficiency rating if it's high use the up arrow if it's if it's medium uh, use the little square and if it's low use the down arrow um, I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of that in this video but please go and watch my video on case when if you find that confusing what I want to talk about is the GT extras package to create the table itself and so let's jump right into that so if we scroll down here the first thing I've done is I've, is I've, I've just said uh, GT, right? So let's go up a bit. If I take away this pipe operator and I just ran that code as it is over there, control enter, it produces an output down here in the console and it's pretty ugly. Okay, not pretty, nothing to write home about, not very exciting. I put in the pipe operator and then I'm going to remove the pipe operator here to show you what happens when I just add nothing else but just the GT function. And you can see on the on the right over here, it's created a table hmm. a little bit better, still not great, um, but certainly an improvement. We don't have headings, we don't have color. Um, this isn't changed into sort of one decimal point. There's all sorts of things we want to do to this table, but it's a start. So we've already made a huge leap just by adding the GT function. Now I'm going to add that pipe operator back, so it's going to continue running the code beneath it. And here we've got a whole lot of functions that come with GT and GT extras, uh, and they're really lovely and they're quite intuitive. They're not complicated. They kind of, you know, they do what they say they do. So um, uh, Cole's hide is to hide a column and I'm hiding the columns equals uh, efficiency rating. That's the column that I probably didn't need to create in the first place. Anyway, sorry about that. But anyway, this is a nice example of how to hide a column from your table that's not necessary. Then tab header, right? So now we've got, we're going to add in a title. 2008 vehicle efficiency and a subtitle okay so if we stop right there and run that code up until that point boom shakalaka there we own the tables looking much better now we've got a heading we've gotten rid of the column that we didn't want we've got a subheading and the table's beginning to take a little bit of shape okay let's add the pipe operator back so that it continues to run the code beneath that so the next thing we've got here is format numbers okay and basically what i want to do if you look at the table over here these numbers in average city and average highway fuel efficiency uh, they've got a whole lot of decimal points. I just want one decimal point. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to format numbers in columns and they're going to be equal to concatenation, average city, average highway, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then I'm. Then what do we want to do? We want decimals equals one. And so it's going to just have one decimal place for those numbers. I'm also wanting to change the labels. This 
AVG underscore CTY isn't very nice. I'm going to change all of those. So where it says count, I'm going to say that's the count of models, the number of model of cars. AVG underscore city is going to be city MPG. So that's the miles per gallon in the city. Same for highways. The efficiency icon um, heading, I'm going to change into efficiency. And if I take away the uh, pipe operator there and run it until there, you'll see what happens. Boom shakalaka, much better. Everything is beginning to look rosy. Okay, let's pop the pipe operator back there and let the code run even further. And now I'm wanting to do a couple of things. So firstly, this little icon that we've got under efficiency, I want that to be in the middle of the column. So not difficult to do. I say, I use the function uh, calls align, right? And as I said, these functions really do what you think they would do. Um, I'm going to say a line center. You could say left, you could say right. I'm going to say center. And which column do we want to uh, do that for? Columns equals efficiency icon. And it's going to do that column. So it's going to use the actual name of the column, not the label of the column that we've given it earlier. Okay, and I can run that and you can see exactly what will happen. Boom shakalaka. There you go. The icon is right in the middle. Happy days. Next, I want to add some footnotes right now. Follow me, this isn't complicated, but you just need to follow quite carefully. I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna stick our pipe operator back and we're gonna run into uh, table footnotes or tab footnotes, right? The first thing is we'd say what the footnote is gonna say. So it's gonna footnote equals, and we've got some text. Then that footnote needs to be referenced somewhere in your table. It'll put a little, uh, a little superscript one and R needs to know where does it need to put that. And that's what is meant by the little uh, argument here, location, right? And so under location, we say um, uh, cells call label. And uh, we've said we want it in columns, average city, average highway. Again, we're using the actual name of the variables, not the label that we created earlier. So it's going to create a little label at the headings of these two uh, variables. And then we're doing the same thing for a second footnote over here, which is just talking about these labels. Let me run that. I'm going to remove that pipe operator and run the code up until there. And you'll see exactly what I mean. And there you can see the two little footnotes have appeared and they uh, have got the appropriate numbers. And those numbers are assigned to the appropriate variable headings. So the table is really beginning to take shape. Happy days, very exciting stuff. Now, the next little feature of GT Extras is absolutely gorgeous. It's adding a theme. There's lots and lots of themes that you can apply. I'm just going to add one of them but you can experiment with them. They're absolutely lovely. Um, I'm going to add the pipe operator back and I'm going to run the code just until this theme and you'll see what a lovely thing that happens right here. Boom shakalaka. There you go. It's added a theme. Uh, there's lots of themes you can add and I'm not going to get into that in this video. I've got another video about GT Extras in which I go through all of the different themes that you can use. Um, this is just one of them. I like this one. It's nice. It's neat. It's nice and professional, uh, but you can experiment with the ones that you like. Now for this next section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add back our pipe operator and I'm going to run all the code to get to the sort of final product. So let's run it. And then I'm going to walk through the code that kind of got us there. Um, let's see where, where we, we've added the themes. Here we are, right. So these little colored boxes that have been placed around the values in these two columns, that comes from this function here, GT color box. Okay, and let's have a look at the code that's required to get that in place. So we use the, the function GT color box, open brackets. We first of all define which variable it's, it's going to be applied to. So columns equals average city. Then this domain I'm basically saying it's going to apply this Viridis color palette uh, and it's going to assign a different color depending on the value of the number in that cell. We want to tell R what the range of values within which it may find numbers. In other words, in this case, for the average city, we've said somewhere the, the numbers are going to be between 10 and 25. And so it's going to assign colors within that range. Okay. Similarly, for the average highway, I've extended the range slightly to 15 to 35. Okay. So it's just so that it chooses the top and the bottom of the color scale are assigned to the top and the bottom of the numbers within this concatenation, if that makes sense. Now let's just talk about adding colors to, you know, we've got in the efficiency column, we've got our little arrows and, and the block, and we want to change them to uh, green, orange, and red. Easy to do. Basically, this is just a tab style. So we're telling GT Extras, look, we want to add a little bit of style to these things. Um, now, 
what is inside those cells is in fact text, right? That arrow is an icon that exists in your sort of text lexicon. So we're saying style equals cell text. We want to add the green color and the size 20, weight bold. Where are we going to do that? Location equals um, cells body, column efficiency icon, row efficiency rating equals equals high. So in any row or any observation where the efficiency rating was considered to be high, uh, we want uh, this to be applied, but only in the column of efficiency icon. Okay, does that make sense? If you look at the code, it does make sense, but I want you to practice this at home and do it yourself. We've done the same thing uh, for uh, efficiency rating medium, and then the same thing for efficiency rating low, just different colors. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, as promised, here's a web page that's got the table that I've just produced, and here is all of the code that was used to produce that table. You can click on the little link over there, and that will copy the code, and you can stick it straight into uh, RStudio and run it yourself. I've also got these little annotations, and if you hover over them, uh, you can see the little kind of explanatory notes where needs be. This page and others are available uh, for free. So if you go to learnmore365.com and there'll be a link on the screen that will take you there. You go get it, create a free account so you don't pay for this and that'll you'll give access to this dashboard. If you go into the dashboard, you can scroll down and click on uh, free resources and click on any of the free resources and download whatever it is uh, that we're looking at. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful. Click on the link. Uh, speak to you soon. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Take care. Greg Martin here. Bye.